Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, home built scale B-17 is ready for first flight. FAR 107 waivers are being issued. NASA to test Spanwise adaptive wing. I'm Brie Cross, it's October 28, 2016, and this is Airborne Limited. Today our first report starts with the question, when is FAA certification of a large-scale model airplane required? The answer is, any time it must have a pilot on board to fly it. This is the case with a 17-year labor of love that has reached a significant milestone in Dixon, Illinois. A one-third scale B-17G World War II bomber built by Jack Bally has received its special airworthiness certificate from the FAA and is approved for flight testing. Even more unusual about this aircraft is that it was not scaled down from the full-size B-17 bomber, but actually scaled up from plans for a one-ninth scale radio control model. It has been designed to house its single pilot while maintaining the basic appearance of the full-scale B-17. Referred to as the Bally Bomber, it has a wingspan of just over 34 feet and is powered by four Hearth 60 horsepower two-stroke engines. It weighs an empty at 1,800 pounds. Taxi tests were conducted earlier this month, and the next step is a first flight. Bally has not set a date for that milestone, but we wish him all the best in getting his dream machine into the air. When the FAA issued their new FAR 107 for non-recreational use of small unmanned aerial systems in late August of this year, they were aware that commercial operators may require special approvals for operations not specifically covered in the regulation. Therefore, a waiver procedure has been established. The FAA now reports that as of October 24th, the agency has approved 81 authorizations for flights in Class D and Class E airspace and has issued 36 waivers of Part 107 provisions to drone operators who applied after the rule's effective date. However, the agency says it has found that many applications have incorrect or incomplete information. As a result, the agency has had to reject 71 waiver requests and 854 airspace applications. The FAA has published procedures for obtaining the waivers and reminds applicants that without a detailed description of how the applicant intends to meet the waiver standards, the FAA cannot determine if a waiver is possible. After the break, 50-year-old wing technology gets a NASA update. The Bristel Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristel is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. NASA is developing and validating a system that will allow part of an aircraft's wing to fold in flight to test the feasibility of increasing efficiency through wing adaptation. Engineers at NASA are working on the Spanwise Adaptive Wing concept. NASA abbreviates this concept as SAW. The concept would permit the outboard portions of the wings to adapt as much as 75 degrees to optimally meet the demands of the various conditions throughout the flight. This could potentially result in an increase in efficiency by reducing drag and increasing lift and performance. According to NASA, while the North American XB-70 Valkyrie bomber examined wing articulation 50 years ago, modern actuator technology makes it possible to explore deeper into its potential benefits. NASA says that the benefits of wing articulation spans across several regimes, from taxiing on the ground to takeoff to cruise and even to supersonic flight. It's Friday, and that means that it's time for a and CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. With the passing of Bob Hoover this week, Jim and all of aviation have lost a friend. However, Jim reminds us that what we have learned from Bob can be passed on. Here is this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Bree, and hi, folks. Well, there's only one real choice in conversation today, and that's the recent loss of Bob Hoover. 
I spent yesterday, uh, after getting notified uh, shortly after his passing, just devastated. Uh, he's one of the best friends I ever had, one of the most extraordinary human beings I've ever worked with. And it had been an honor and a privilege to take his side, to be a wingman here and there, to engage in various fights of honor, or for honor as the case may be, on behalf of the aviation community as Bob saw it. Over the last couple of years, Bob and I talked more and more. We met with him not so long ago to do work on a documentary project that will see its way to completion because Bob asked for it and what Bob wants, Bob gets. But ultimately, I wanted to talk about the word I'm left with today, and that's gratitude. What an extraordinary life. What an extraordinary example. What a phenomenal lesson to teach people as we go forward about how incredible aviation is and how incredible aviators can be. Uh, this was a man who lived a life of service. It was more than a concept. It was how he lived, how he breathed, how he acted, and how ultimately he died. I guess what I want to emphasize is this. I have gotten calls from all over the world in the last 24 hours from folks who cared about Bob and idolized him and appreciated the contribution he made to an amazing world. And there's this undercurrent of, well, what can I do? What can I say? And I've got an answer for you. And it's something I was talking to Sean Tucker about yesterday. And it's simply this, be like Bob. He believed in giving of himself. He believed in donating, giving, persevering, struggling, whatever it took to make sure that the world he left behind was better than the one that he came in with. Be Like Bob is more than a slogan or a hashtag. Be Like Bob is a way to live. It's a way to show people around us that we are a proud group, that we accomplish many things, and that ultimately we make the world better by being pilots, by being aviation professionals, and by virtue of an industry that has done everything from defend this democracy to getting grandma down to Hoboken to see her grandkids. It's an extraordinary industry, an extraordinary lifestyle, and it produced a Bob Hoover and so many others. So in honor of Bob, I'm going to do my best to be like Bob. I hope you will too. We will complete all the projects that Bob asked us to do. We will do our very best to make sure they are deserving of the honor bestowed upon us by his request. But more important than anything else, don't forget, 94 years gone by in a flash. But what an example, what a piece of history, what an extraordinary legacy to leave every aviator, every person who looks at the sky and says, yeah, that's, that's for me. Well, that was for Bob Hoover. That was for all of us. And most important, that was for a community that honored loved and respected an extraordinary human being be like bob after these messages rolls royce is testing new aviation engine technology explore no limits flying in the faa certified sea ray amphibious lsa one of the top three best-selling lsas in the u.s progressive aerodyne sea ray comes equipped with a rotax engine and exhibits extraordinary handling on land water and in the air Check it out at www.cray.com. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Mm -hmm. 
Rolls-Royce has run the world's most powerful aerospace gearbox for the first time. The power gearbox is a vital component of the ultrafan design as it enables the engine design to offer efficient power over a wide range of takeoff thrust settings. The Raytheon company plans to build the T-100 Integrated Air Training System on a shovel-ready site in Mississippi. The T-100 Integrated Air Training System is a comprehensive, next-generation training solution customized to meet and exceed the U.S. Air Force's mission requirements. The CH-53K King Stallion Heavy Lift Helicopter has successfully completed initial operational testing by the U.S. Marine Corps. It's reported that post-evaluation interviews of the aircrew, ground crew, and flight surgeons have revealed a high regard for the operational capability demonstrated by the King Stallion. More than 50 government and industry officials have agreed to launch a new ASTM International Committee dedicated to developing standards in the area of commercial spaceflight. The committee will host their first meeting in the spring of 2017. The Geico Skytypers Air Show team will complete their 15-year show season on Florida's first coast during the Sea and Sky Spectacular Air Show on November 5th and 6th in Jacksonville Beach. They will demonstrate their ability to type in the sky and you'll see exciting formation aerobatics. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Early on in flight training, student pilots are taught to check that fuel camps are secure during a pre-flight inspection. Now the FAA has issued a safety alert for operators involving fuel caps separating from aircraft during operations. However, the safety alert has nothing to do with student training. The fuel caps are separating from airliners. According to the alert, an increasing number of aircraft fuel caps have been found on taxiways and runways. The majority of the caps have been identified as approved replacement parts used on Airbus aircraft. Airbus has studied the issue and published recommendations to air carriers who choose to use non-Airbus produced replacement caps. The FAA recommends that all air carriers, in addition to those who operate Airbus aircraft, should inspect their aircraft fuel caps at their earliest convenience. The inspection should verify that fuel caps are of an improved type for that aircraft functioning properly and adequately secured. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Have a great weekend. We will see you Monday from MBAA.